Hi, and welcome to the Practical Ascension Podcast. I'm Tracy Goody, and today we are continuing on with our Ascension Impact interview series, and I'm joined by Allison Holly. Allison is an Andromedan starseed, a channel, and an awakening guide, as well as the author of the books The Era of the True Creator and Aesthetic Playground. In 2012, Allison was overwhelmed by the intensity of spiritual awakening. Many new awarenesses and gifts opened up for her during this time, including moments of spontaneous channeling and visions of the future. These profound experiences led her to understand the game that is life and to know that we are all masters going through the process of awakening to higher frequency truths. Allison offers channeled guidance ecstatic sexuality teachings, workshops, and retreats to assist you along your path. So you can check out some links uh, for Allison in the show notes below. Hi, welcome to the Practical Ascension Podcast. I am your host and Practical Ascension Guide, Tracy Goody. Today, I am running with my Ascension Impact Series, and I am joined by Allison Holly. And Allison is a new connection for me. She is a author, channel, light body, and ascension guide. So we're already uh, connecting and clicking pretty easily, <laughs> which is no surprise. So I welcome you so much, Allison. Thank you for connecting with me today. Hi, Tracy. Thank you so much for having me here. I instantly felt a connection with you as well. And um, it'll be it'll be interesting. I'm allowing myself right in this moment to open up to whatever frequencies and information uh, come through for this discussion. Absolutely. And I can feel those energies as well. I can feel my feet wanting to connect into the earth. So I'm feeling like this is going to be a pretty high frequency chat, maybe a little bit less on the um, our own brains coming through. Yeah, <laughs> a little yeah. bit more on the uh, guides flowing through, but we are Absolutely. open to whatever happens here. Mm, so absolutely. There's a lot of different areas um, I really want to explore with you, but the first one that I want to bring into focus before I actually ask the question of, you know, how you're perceiving Ascension Impact is I want to take a look at your perspective of the light body right now, mm. how it connects in with the physical body and what's really flowing through for you about that. And I'm just going to kind of sit and holding the space too, as mm -hmm. you um, see what comes up. Yes. You know, when we use different terms, especially when we use them frequently, we lose some of the fullness of it. And the first thing that's hitting me is the light body is a literal light. Mm -hmm. So what's been revealed to me is that the entire process of creation involves bringing light forth from the void. And we are these crystals, we're essentially these prisms that bring the light through and then project it as our creation into many different facets, different colors. So we are both the void and the creators from the void and bringing through the light. So we're all of it. And in this particular density reality, what we're doing is we're gathering more and more light and projecting it. So as we activate the light body, what that really means is we are gaining enlightenment, right? We are gathering and, br and bringing ourselves into a capacity of channeling more and more and higher and higher frequencies of light. Mm -hmm. So that's the whole awakening and ascension process is opening our physical selves and opening our energetic selves to streaming more light through us. The term enlightenment is, uh, again, another one of those words that we kind of lose sight of what it really means because we use the word, but enlightenment is to bring more light through. So we're the light bearers, we're the light bringers, right? The light workers, mm. so many of those terms, because we are the ones who have agreed to continuously open our very cellular nature to higher streams of light. Mm, I love this. And now yeah. I'm curious what that brought to mind for me as well is the way that you painted it as we are the crystals that the light is shining through. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if you find that that... Um, works in with the idea of creating our reality with the light. So just as we are the crystals, you know, as the filter, when those crystals are clarified and we're really pulling through that high frequency light, 
the reality that we're also creating through our filter that also becomes that ascendant reality right yeah. so i'm just wondering if you find that that um you know the experience that we are living if that shifts and transforms as we are opening to more of that channeling absolutely absolutely i mean i'm sure everyone listening to this and definitely you know you and i can draw from our experience of uh, my life is completely not the same <laughs> as it was <laughs> you know before i uh, had the initial spark of that awakening yeah. and um i am a different person although yeah. i'm the same person what i can feel and we were talking a little bit before we started the podcast about you know, this is the time where there's really a high level of light body activations going on this year. Mm -hmm. Um, at the end of last year, I did a, a channeling, um, circle locally. And what came through was this is the year that the light body is activated for a lot of people. It's going to bring up all sorts of physical things, mm. but, um, you know, this is very much the focus and I can feel that with this particular focus in this time, this year, <laughs> right. Um, we are going, and those who have been preparing are really going through that next layer of shifting. I just looked yeah. down at my computer and it said shift. And you know, when those <laughs> glow at you, you, you know, <laughs> yep, I get so, <laughs> um, there's a, there's a lot of shifting happening and we are going to, um, a whole new realm, which is why, as I was sharing with you, I can't even see the next steps for myself Yeah, because we can't see what we can't allow in what we have those filters for. Yeah. And the filters serve us. We need them in order to have this human experience yeah. and to create on a certain density level. We need those filters. We need a lot of them. Yeah. Um, but as we continue the ascension process and opening and activating and awakening, what we have happen is those filters they become clarified mm. and they, they shift. Now each of us has a blueprint. So we don't completely become um, personality less, mm -hmm. right? We don't completely become, um, you know, nothingness, right? We're <laughs> yeah. still in this exactly. body. We're still human. Yeah. <laughs> We're still human. Yeah. Um, but there are really massive transformations happening on a physical level because the light has reached that layer of the density realm. Mm -hmm. So, and it's happening very, very quickly at the speed of light, I guess we can say. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <get> with it. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. So something that I've been noticing a lot recently as well, and the way you mentioned, uh, you know, light bodies would be activated this year and there'll be physical things coming to the surface. Uh, for, for me personally, last year was my year of like initiation. Like, yes, mm -hmm. I've been initiated for many years before that, but last year was like, I went in depth. It was a big physical, big emotional. Like I, I went through the deepest, darkest waters mm -hmm. that were available now this year, I feel fantastic. I feel physically fantastic. Everybody that I'm talking to is really feeling this physical struggle right now. Mm. And I'm wondering if you find that has that is connected in with this light body expansion. And I often think maybe that's why I went through the year I went through last year so that I, I was able to hold this space so that my physical body feels great right now so that I can be there to hold the space for those who are moving through it more so. So I'm just curious what um, flows through to you, you know, specifically about the physical body and the transformation that that is, that that's moving through with the light body activating. Yes, beautiful. You know, the way that I see it, and everyone's going to be going through this at different paces mm. with different, with different things coming up and intensities. Yeah. And intensities. Yeah. Right. And, um, yeah, I really want to, to make sure to draw attention to if people are going through physical things, not to feel bad about themselves, yeah, mm. not to feel like there's something wrong happening. Yeah. Um, or if you're not going through, right, we can have some, some, uh, interesting hierarchies around, you know, yeah. like oh, I did go through it. Good. I'm on my path. 
It's like, it's okay. We're all yeah. going to be different with this. Yeah, we really exactly. are all going to be different. Yeah. And there are massive um, clearings happening within the physical body. So the way that it's kind of shown to me, when I went in uh, to a deeper channeling space and I looked at, you know, we, you and I were talking about what's happening on the cellular level. Mm. What I saw was a lot of, it's almost like a Phoenix and then the ash that's mm. left over, right? Yeah. So we're burning away the denser carbon structure of the body to then have the crystalline body. So what does that mean? It's a process that we do make really fast quantum leaps at times, Mm -hmm. but it also happens kind of slowly because we would disintegrate if the fullness of our light came through all at once. Yeah, exactly. Literally burst into nothingness, right? Yeah. So... But what's happening on a physical cellular level that I, you know, and again, I'm not a scientist, but being able to, I get Pictionary a lot when I go in. And what I was seeing was it had something to do with the mitochondria of the cell Mm -hmm. and there is a burning process happening. And then the burning process as things are burning, it's, they were showing me, you know, almost like when you, uh, make something in a kiln, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got like, um, like say you've got paper holding something together and then the clay is in there and you put it in a kiln and the paper disintegrates so that the structure, and I don't know if this is the best example, but, um, so that the structure of the clay stays as it's, as it's burning, you know, or whatever that process would be. Our bodies right now are based in that carbon structure And as we activate into the light body, more of that carbon structure literally burns away and turns to ash. And that is why so many people are going through cleansings right now, clearings right now, because on a very uh, physical level, we are moving into a new structure that can contain more light. Mm. Um, Just as, you know, a piece of coal doesn't contain is not able to flow as much light as a crystal. It's a similar, similar process. Mm. Now we don't destroy the physical body. We make these gentle shifts that still contain our structure, but it can uh, allow more light to roll through us. Mm. And so we physically glow, we emanate light. We become um, of that frequency where you know, we light up the room. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, this is why, uh, what I'm seeing is we're moving into the realms of ascended master Mm -hmm. because ascended master, you know, as, um, as it was written in scripture before, you know, Oh, an angel came into my room and it was so bright. I had to shield my eyes. We are moving into that as, um, as humans. Mm. I love that. So now what, um, guidance would you give to those that are really feeling that right now, Mm. you know, really feeling the, um, feeling the shakeup that's going on in the cells of their body feeling, you know, and I know a lot of people are experiencing it some as like a whole world shakeup, right? Mm. Not necessarily just physically, but what guidance would you kind of give them, uh, to, to encourage them, you know, you're okay, you're yeah. sane and keep moving. Yeah. Mm. Well, I I mean, the the first thing that came to mind is the joke that we were talking about just before we started, which is drink more water. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Drink a lot of water because water is going to help cleanse a lot of that. And there's also um water bearing foods, mm. foods that can contain a lot of water and make it more bioavailable is what we call it. So, Mm -hmm. you know, fruits and vegetables, things that um, hold water and then deliver it to the body. Mm. So there are things that we can take care of on a physical level, but really, you know, because all of this is starting on the energetic level, it is, it's a lot of different things like, you know, I mean, this is still physical, but it's a conduit between the energetic and the physical realms, which is breathing. Yeah breathing. And then also just, I want to tune in and I know there's going to be a pause on the podcast here, but that's all good. I want to make sure that I'm really delivering what I need to. 
it's scary and it's okay to have it be scary. You know, we've got a lot, we're multidimensional beings. We have a lot that we're um, working with in this realm. We're working with the rules of the game in multiple layers of reality. So we're working with this physical realm and it's easy to get scared about all sorts of things in the physical realm because we can easily see the limitation because we're um, it's because it's denser and, and it moves differently than the higher frequency realms. And we're also on these higher frequency realms. So we're doing the dance of all of it at the same time, mm-hmm. giving ourselves a lot of love and grace mm-hmm. through the process, knowing that whatever is happening in this moment is exactly what needs to be happening. Nothing more, nothing less. As my best friend tells me every day, you're doing a good job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're all doing a good job. You know, the the signal of something coming up in the body, it's just that it's a signal. It can be neutral. Mm, yeah. Yes, I love that. I love that because that's what I find a lot is that signal or, you know, pain, struggle, whatever's going on in your life will take that as, well, I've done something wrong. Or right. like, I know myself, I'd be like, you know, cause I had been on the Ascension journey for so long. I'm like, what did I not deal with? What am I ignoring? <laughs> like, you know, all that self blame and judgment of myself. And just like you're saying, like those basics, the, the water, the breathing, the gentleness, like that's what it comes down to. Like with all of the different spiritual teachings that are around, it's those simple practices that I found for me personally really helped with the most challenging aspects. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. It's really easy to think that we've missed something that we're not doing something right. It's easy to, to get into that spiral of shame or whatever it is. And yeah, it is tuning into those frequencies um, that are beyond the human experience uh, beyond the, the, the regular human experience, right? When we Mm -hmm. tune into those frequencies, there isn't such a thing as right or wrong. Mm -hmm. And it's so confusing and hard for our human selves to agree with that. Yeah. Especially people who have a deep sense of purpose. Yeah. We have a deep sense of purpose. We're always thinking, how can I get more in alignment? Mm -hmm. So when something comes up, we take it as a signal, like, Oh no, I'm not doing what I need to do when actually it's, it's such a gift for us because Mm -hmm. it is hard to see sometimes what the next step is. Mm -hmm. And sometimes these things coming up in the physical body are actually just this beautiful, gentle push in a, in a slightly different direction and it's transmuting energy. There's a lot going on. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of beneficial aspects to who, what our kind of evidence-based brain is like, oh, yes. well, I see the evidence of this and that's the way yeah. it is. But it's it's kind of like relaxing into it. There's a much bigger picture that's actually going on. That's one thing that I always like uh, to mention in my teachings is that there was like this story or this um, parable or whatever of like this man and his son like broke his leg and the neighbor comes over and is like, I'm so sorry, yeah. your bad luck. You know that one? Uh-huh. And then, yeah. And then the guy's like, you know, there is, you know, we don't know. I don't remember the exact words, but we don't yes. know if it's good or it's bad. And then like yeah. they're recruiting for the army or something like that. And the son couldn't go because his leg was broken and it, on and on and on. You just yeah. never know where it's going to lead you ultimately. Yeah. 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 I love that. Yeah. Story. It's a, it's a, it's a gift. Mm. <laughs> I love that story. Yeah. 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 Where he says, they say, you must be, you're so lucky. And he says, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm so lucky for this. Maybe I'm so yeah. lucky for this. And in the end, you know, it's really, it is, it's about zooming out that bigger picture. Yep. And zooming out can be a really helpful tool when we're in the thick of it. Mm. Pulling our perspective back to that of the observer or observing the fullness of our experience, you know, observing the observer as it's called. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> bringing more of the fullness of the picture in where we find that peace because it's all, it's all part of it. Mm, yeah. 
Mm. One last okay. little, yeah, oh, yeah, keep, please, please keep going. <laughs> one, one last little thing that's really coming through is mm-hmm. to tune into receiving this year, mm. receiving and receiving is such a, um, it's a powerfully passive state is what I want to call it. Mm-hmm. And receiving is going to help us as we move through all of these um, shifts. And it is exactly that story that you shared just now. Receiving is not uh, pulling or pushing Mm -hmm. because we are just allowing what's coming to us with the ultimate trust that everything is for our benefit and we're creators. So we get to tune into the highest frequency for ourselves to enact that benefit, the highest benefit that's really, uh, that we're capable of, of experiencing, right? So receiving is a lot of surrender. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of allowing with that trust that all that's coming to us is for our greater good. And what would you say, um, what guidance would you give? This seems to be the the question I want to keep asking you is what guidance would you give around, um, embodiment of receiving so like a lot of us know the logical receiving is you know that's where it's at what guidance would you give about really embodying that energy of receiving it's play Mm. (laughs) and it almost it's funny I'm getting this really emotional you know response (laughs) to just feeling that question and what's coming through because play is such a simple we brush it off. We brush it off. But when we are, when we are receiving, so if we look at it as if it's the law of attraction or the, the law of assumption, I really like to play with, Mm -hmm. um, where we assume that what we desire is happening. Mm -hmm. And when we're in that frequency, we assume that what we call out for comes to us. So in that assumption, if it's not here right now, I'm going to go play in the meantime. Yeah. And that's where we start, right? It's in the meantime, I'm playing. Yeah. And then it becomes a continuum of play. Yeah. And then it becomes, now I'm not waiting for anything. Now I'm just saying that and that and that. And I play, yeah. I play with the creation. I play with the, in the, in between and find so much joy in that. Mm-hmm. And in order to, this goes into uh, like a real big segue <laughs> uh, into some of the other things that I teach, which is um, about the ecstatic body, which is mm-hmm. really how when light comes into the body, it feels sexual in nature. Yeah. There are a lot of mirrors between the um, the way that we are erotically and sexually mm-hmm. and the way that the energetics of the all work, yeah. right? Well, creation. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Creation. Yeah. Exactly. It's, yeah. it's exactly that. Mm-hmm. And so when we, and I'll just be really brief here, but when we look at receiving mm-hmm. from that, from the purely sexual perspective, what needs to happen in order to receive, there needs to be a dilation. There needs to be an opening, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. All of the cells, all of the activation points in our bodies, all of our chakra points in our bodies and in our auric field, because we have chakra points in our aura as well. Mm -hmm. It's part of that full matrix that makes up who we are. When we open them, they receive more light. Okay. And so to open them, we activate our pleasure. Yeah. And this is true micro and it's true macro. Mm -hmm. We are built as pleasure seeking, pleasure desiring beings Mm -hmm. for a reason, because when we are in our pleasure, we dilate those activation points and more light can come through. Mm -hmm. So I know that's a very, you know, almost esoteric kind of out there answer to, (laughs) to that, but to receive, we play yeah. that dilates and opens us to receiving yeah. more. Like, I mean, it's practical in my mind. It, yeah, good. Okay. Sense. Yeah. Like you can, I can see the flow of like energetically that receptivity, you, you need something to open that into. And so that energy of play, that energy of joy, that energy of fun 
the opposition of force and like that holding on really tight. So yeah. I mean, that just makes sense logically. <laughs> like, I mean, when you're holding on to something tight and you have that force and pressure, it's closed, it's constricted. Yeah. But whenever you are relaxed into that, it, it's opening so that that makes perfect sense to me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So yes. now moving into the focus of the Ascension impact, and we may have already touched on, you know, some areas, but I would love to hear your perspective on this and how mm -hmm. you would define Ascension impact right now. And I know this always shifts mm -hmm. and evolves for us a little bit, but I'd love to hear what's flowing through for you around this right now. Yeah. So when I hear that, when I hear that phrase, Ascension impact, what I immediately feel is our existence, our very existence is the creative force, mm -hmm. meaning we don't necessarily need to do anything yeah. to have this energy continue to flow, to create, to uh, impact um, and move through this ascension process. Mm. It is, there is a divine force that animates all of life. And what we're really doing right now, um, you know, we're moving into what we call the divine feminine, but really we're bringing balance. Yeah. So it's divine masculine, divine feminine into oneness. But what's been not happening as we bring more balance in is we haven't been into that receptive place. Yeah. So, <laughs> You know, it's kind of this um, really interesting experience. Oh, this is what it means to be in the divine feminine even more. And what that really means is to be in that stillness and in that flow and in that receptivity so that the divine flow of what is and that that uh, source that animates all of life can easily flow through us. Mm -hmm. And so... Yeah, it's a uh, really my my feeling right now is a lot about um receiving. It's a lot about um being in that place of allowing the light to move through us and surrender and mm -hmm. play and how all of that uh is interwoven. And it, it kind of feels to me too, it's like there's like this element of receiving that you're talking about, but it's at a level of like without expectation like of creating this ascension impact just by the naturalness of of you and your energy frequency without you know having to even like define it or like yeah. you know put a label on it or anything like that but just allowing it to reveal itself like it feels like such a natural um, progression and I I do believe that is you know a more um accurate representation of the feminine whereas what a lot of us are moving through right now and what like, you know, the rise of the feminine that's going on right now is still very masculine centered as yeah. of course it's going to be like, it's going to take a little while for us to work all the way out of this. But just like you said, like there's um, there, there just seems to be such a naturalness and such a, hmm, I, I don't even know that I like effortless, this um like because it's just it's just is it's not like searching for a purpose or like I'm impacting ascension this way which is like that masculine right it's just very much allowing so I I love that view mm. yeah yeah I think there's a lot of you know we tend to not trust if I'm not doing nothing's happening yeah yeah and even the way that we see doing is different right because yeah. I'm doing yeah. but I'm also in that very, very receptive place. Right. Mm -hmm. So I am flowing with it. I get yeah. to play in that current, but I am absolutely in the current. And we, in our current society, it's a little bit difficult sometimes to move into, well, what does that mean to just receive? Yeah. Because we don't trust. Yeah. And that lack of trust is kind of keeping us blocked and it's keeping us in effort. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And when we trust that we are, first of all, our divine blueprint mm -hmm. is going to make us naturally seek and naturally desire certain things. So everything's already created within us. Yeah. We're not going to miss it. <laughs> we're not going to miss it. Yeah. 
And, you know, the illusion of time makes us feel like we're going to miss things. It makes us feel like we could mess up and all of those things. There is a really, really powerful activation that happens as we drop into receptivity Mm -hmm. where we're like, okay, yeah, I see. Yeah. I see. And then we trust more. And then then it's a lot easier to allow a lot more joy and and playfulness in that space. So it really is all, it's all interwoven. Yes. It all connects together. And that's what I find is when I drop into that space, because I have the tendency to, for a a very masculine energy, I want to go, I want to do, I want it like that. That's, that's my natural tendency. So if I need a lot of mindfulness to remember to be back in that flow. And whenever I do allow that, which I'm pretty consistent with now, because I mean, I I see the results of it, but whenever I do allow it, like, nothing will stop me from getting up and dancing. Nothing will stop me from like running around outside with my dog just because I feel like doing it in the middle of the day. Like yeah. it's just, it's such a um, celebration energy without necessarily having something specific to celebrate, just celebrating how good it feels to be in that flow. And yes. I think that that right there is an Ascension impact. Like when I'm in that energy, my kids feel that energy. My oh, community yeah. feels that energy. Like that is the ascension impact. And that's just the embodiment of what it feels like to feel good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> or like, really, this is all about feeling good and feeling ecstatic and feeling joyful and feeling love. And yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's really, it's a good ride we all signed up for yeah. to be able to stream these energies through our physical selves. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a really cool experience. Yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> um, I love this. So I'm going to start kind of coming, bringing this to a close. I feel like we could keep talking about this yes. for a while, but I would love to know anything else that is, that's really flowing to the surface for you right now that you would like to share with the audience. Um, yeah, I just want to share, I just want to share this. Let's see, how can I put it? I really want to reiterate, we're all doing a good job. There's infinite love for each of us available. There is, we're all so loved and so cared for. And beyond that, it's, it's beautiful and wonderful. And we're meant to, if there is such a thing as meant to, we are, we are predestined to follow our bliss and our joy and letting ourselves be guided by pleasure and not pain is really the way forward. And yes, we experience pain. Yes, we experience all of those things, but wow, there's a power in presence when we're in the pain and it absolutely shows both pleasure and pain at the same time. And that is a, that is the transmutation that occurs. Um, sorry, I forgot I was closing my eyes. <laughs> no, I, I do that too. It's all okay. Right. <laughs> uh, there's a really powerful transmission that occurs when we simply allow and stop judging ourselves for it. Mm-hmm. And just say, yeah, you know, in this moment, no matter what these uh, circumstances might look like, I allow myself to be full of love and happy mm. and whatever else, right? Yeah, I love that. Oh my goodness. Allison, thank you so much for joining me today. And I encourage you guys to uh, check out in the show notes below. I'll put some links to Allison's work. Um, I'm sure if you're resonating with her, you're going to jump on those. So do that, Allison. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, everybody. (laughs) Happy ascending.